Hi everyone, welcome back to another reaction video. How are you doing, you beautiful, beautiful people? I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today we gotta react to Ren as he explains why Sick Boy is off all streaming platforms. The Cujo beats and Ren situation. Ren has been calling all reactors, as you've been mentioning all around and that's amazing of you because you want to show the support and so do i so do we i mean this dude has fought is fighting to his disease and to bring us the art that helped us at least me plenty and we will fight the fight whatever he asks i don't know if he even knows where we, we exist this channel but that doesn't matter because we don't use the artists, we share a journey with them. And if we have the opportunity to help and support, we're going to do that. So everyone on this channel is behind Ren in his fight to... In his fight over Sick Boy. Let's see what exactly are we facing, because I don't know. And I want to. This is a video that I never, ever really wanted to have to make, but it's very important for me that I do. All the time, artists all over the world pour their souls into their work, and that work is tainted by money or greed. A lot of you will have been asking me the question why Sick Boy has disappeared now, as well as YouTube on streaming services. It's a video that was very close to me. It's a video that told my story about my health, it's a video that told the story of many other people who have been gaslit by the medical community. Uh, it's a story of greed in the music industry, ironically, funnily enough. It's also a song that I poured tens of thousands of pounds into for a music video, for promotion. It was also the leading title of the only number one album that I've got, so I was very, very proud of it. And we'll no longer have that song, guys. And I want to go into the reasons why. Also, I do recommend uh, sticking around to the end of this video because I've got a very exciting announcement about all of this that relates to all of this right at the end. People who have been following me for a while, they'll know the sort of person I am, they know the principles that I have, and they'll know how I treat other independent artists. So they'll know why it was so important for me to have to make this video. And I want this to be as unbiased as possible. Obviously, I'm emotionally affected by it, and that may leak in, right? But I want it. I want to share entire clips of these conversations so there can be no doubt such a beautiful soul it might leak in that my most precious my beloved reflect my situation and others song has been taken off the platforms it might leak in let it leak in man it's okay also if Cujo and his girlfriend want to share any more screenshots of other of those conversations i encourage them to because i believe that this should all be public knowledge so there can be no doubt uh I, rather than taking people's words from it i would like to them just to see transparently what has happened here to give context for all of this back in 2022 i buy a beat from beat stars right for anyone who doesn't know beat stars is a platform that connects producers to artists who need beats i do produce most of my own work but i wanted to find some hip-hop beats for inspiration I, what i would usually do is buy a beat arrange it slightly differently, tweak it myself, add my own vocals, add my own layers and stuff like that. I find this banging beat, right, uh, from a producer called Cujo Beats, which I buy an unlimited license for. This is all very important to keep in mind for later on, right? I buy an unlimited license, which means that I am able to put it on all streaming platforms and get as many streams as I want and all recording plat on platforms like YouTube, etc. right? After I do this, I send uh, my YouTube guy that I work with and I send um, the publishing team an email just giving them a heads up being like, yo guys, uh, I bought this beat. They need to be registered correctly. Content ID needs to be turned off. I'll put a clip of that. I'm putting screenshots of those messages here just in case Cujo claims I never did this. I did do this. I also went the extra mile and messaged the team and said, look, we need to credit him on Spotify credits and stuff like that as well because sometimes artists don't always fully credit uh, producers. I think that I forgot to do it in the YouTube description for like the first month or two and then I then um, updated it and then he was fully credited the whole time right that was just a, a, a lapse 
because there was a lot going on. I was in Canada treating and stuff. But anyway, he was credited fully, like very soon in everywhere. And as far as I was aware, registered everywhere. So I don't think anything of it, right? Also, in the Beat Stars contract, it says very clearly that the person selling you the beat has to own the beat. And if they, if there are any uh, elements of the beat that he doesn't own, he has to let you know. This is very important to remember for what is to follow as well, right? So, um, so yeah, I think there's no problems. I buy the beat. I record a song. This is before things have blown up with my music, so I'm still pretty underground artist at this point. I record the track, put it out. I even get a message from him at some point, which is also important to remember because of the hypocrisy of this whole situation. That's like, wicked, I love the track, okay? <laughs> remember that too. Before I begin, I just want to add this. I have no problem with BeatStars. I think they're a very innovative company who actually help people make art, which I'm very, very passionate about. I think the contracts and the things you're getting into could be clearer because we're now in a situation negotiating older tracks bought from BeatStars. Um, I would love to talk to the... Um, if, if anyone from there is watching, I imagine they will be at some point. I would love to talk to the uh, CEO, founder of BeatStars, face-to-face. Um, just because I want to understand how something like this could have happened and I want to understand why it escalated the way it did because from what I've heard, he's someone who cares a lot about artists and someone who creates a platform like that I think must be very passionate about music. I'd love to chat to you if you're, if you're listening and I'd love to figure out why. He's such a beautiful soul, isn't he? It's, he's not attacking anyone. He wants to understand and talk it through and show that he was like, genuinely okay the entire way and he's a very passionate like Ren is very he goes the extra mile for the other artists the fact that he like it, it doesn't come of any surprise to anyone that he put the credit everywhere and probably said oh yeah the original is that beat and this that dude beat he never, he's, he's very honest, he's very, that's what we love about him, right? The authenticity. Why this happened and how we can stop things like this happening in the future. Um, I also think that there needs to be a bit more stringent um, checks on if people are selling unlicensed samples because then things tend to get a little bit sticky like they have here. Anyway, that's it. I have no problem with beat stars because um, I'm not interested in going to war with them because I think that it's really cool that there are, there's a platform like that that exists for artists and producers to be connected. Just thought I'd put that out there, make that clear. Right, so I arrive home from Canada after a year and a half long treatment of treating brain damage and autoimmunity, which a lot of you will know if you've been following my journey. And I'm expecting a nice two weeks with my mates before I do my first ever solo show in five years because of my health. So I'm just like, I want a nice chill time. I want to be able to focus on uh, rehearsing and stuff. Very early on, I wake up to a message saying, yo, your song Sick Boy has been taken down. So I, I look at it and sure enough, it's been copyright striked from this guy Cujo Beats' his channel. And initially I'm like, oh, this just must be some automatic fuck up. So like, I don't take it too seriously. I send him a message like, yo, there must have been a technical error or something here. No response for two days. So I'm like, what's going on? So I, I, I check his channel. And then I see a comment of, of, of that beat that he licensed me. And I, and I see a comment that's like, Ren has left me no choice. I'm sorry that I had to do this. And I'm like, okay, so this was intentional. Like, what? Like, the last conversation I had with this guy was months ago with him being like, yo, big up your work, it's sick. So I'm like, super confused about it. So I send him another email like, dude, what's going on? Again, I get absolutely no response. So I put a comment in his YouTube comment section and I'm like, Bro, I'm trying to get hold of you. Why are you ignoring me? Like, I, d I just want to resolve this amicably. What's going on? <laughs> Finally, I get a response. Such a king. Really, such a king. Response on Instagram. And um, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to put all of these responses in their full form so that there can be no doubt as to what happened. I'm just going to read out, like, the key moments and explain the key moments. But if anyone's, like, interested in deep diving so there can be no doubt as to what's happened here, feel free to pause it. Um, if Cujo and his girlfriend, like I said, feel like we've, I've left anything out, they are welcome to post it. I have nothing to hide about this situation. So he responds and he tells me that he's been talking to my lawyer for months, which I have no idea about. I've been in Canada. And um, he seems like quite a nice guy initially. So I'm like, okay, maybe this has all just been a misunderstanding. I remember even saying to like Connor and that, I was like, this has probably just been a misunderstanding and something's gone wrong here. Don't worry. He sounds, seems like you're all right. Dude, we will sort this out. 
But then after that little exchange, I noticed a comment in the YouTube comment section on his video saying that I'm lying about the situation. When I thought that we like on the same page here, so I he's like playing both both sides. Ugh. Pull him up on it, and he's like, "Oh no, I didn't say you were lying." When he clearly did, that should have been like the first red flag for me. But still, giving him the benefit of the doubt, I was like, "Okay, maybe another misunderstanding." <laughs> anyway, so you know, you said you hope. You hoped me and my team would do the right thing. <laughs> I don't even know what the issue is. Is it that I bought an un like a, I spent money on your an un limited unlimited license? No, it's because he look. That's how someone who f who messed up works, right? He sold beats that are were un without copyright, then ran got hit for it and he keeps on hitting him to the ground so i contact my lawyer to find out what the hell is happening because i'm in the dark about all of this situation and he explains to me that i've been sold a uh, beat with a stolen sample with an unlicensed sample and that the uh, bulgarian sample the B bulgarian choir sample owners um had chased him and gone look you've used this beat without permission you've used this, sam this sample without permission um and so you need to give us 50 percent of the publishing split and what my lawyer's done, because we were sold a beat in good faith and it wasn't actually cleared, he's, he's reached out to Kujo and gone, look, I think you need to absorb this for selling this um, uh, for in sure. bad faith, basically. And of they've course. gone, no, we're, we're not going to absorb that. And then <laughs> it's escalated. And they've, I think because my lawyer was being slightly slow with re the responses, they uh, also keep in mind, I don't know any of this is happening right now. To get my attention, they issue a copyright strike on the video, which affects my YouTube channel, by the way, and the video gets taken down um, as a form of leverage, uh, <laughs> which is a bizarre way of dealing with things, I think, uh, because it would have been a good idea to contact me, maybe, like anyone, anyone first. No, man, no, because they're thieves, you know? They are being sold, sued and chased. Yeah, it's not even... They, they are not operating from a place of integrity and honesty. They're, they're operating from a place of, let's, you know, put out the fire. That's what it is. That's, the, that's what we're hearing right now. If this was getting so, like, blown up, like, maybe the lawyers, maybe Cujo could have actually reached out to me, the artist. Nobody did. Um, so I found that a bit bizarre. Any fucking way. Then I read a comment, another comment that Cujo's posted, calling me a coward. Uh, to pay the royalties he's owed, and I'm like, what royalty? Uh, that's also I'm I in my head the publishers are just paying him the money, and now that the the situation has to change until the until everyone agrees on it. But I wasn't even privy to that conversation about what a fair split should be yet. So I was like, what? I I don't owe you. I don't owe this guy money. Like, there's no master splits on the um, Beatstars contracts, by the way. So all money that comes in to Cujo, which should be paid to Cujo, rightly so, comes from the publisher which has nothing to do with me, by the way. I explained this so many times in this conversation, by the way, and he's adamant to say, probably short of like 50 times, pay me my money. I am nothing to do with his money, right? So it's a very bizarre thing to keep saying, but I try to explain that to him patiently, never really takes it in. Anyway, he calls me a coward on this comment, so I pull him up on that. This actually starts to then rub me up a little bit. So I'm like... Only now, such a king, really. Such a high level of self-confidence that the fact that he's only now <laughs> being light li like light up angry a bit i pull him up on that it's saying like the hell like cowardly anyway i'm still giving him the benefit of the doubt at this point anyway despite this i feel like he's probably just misinformed so i still take a side on it and i go on to reassure him he'll get paid his publishing money because i want him to get paid his publishing money doesn't affect me in any way so like i was like yeah i'll chase it up for you i let him know that i'm happy to split publishing if there's a bit of a gray area and i'm kind of reassuring him it's remember it's really important to remember this by the way guys because some, some of the lies that are posted later make me out to be really unreasonable so i'm like yo if there's if there's some simple mistake let's split the publishing it's cool i'm, I'm happy to do that yeah anyway King. so he comes back to me and lies more he says it's always up to the performer to clear the sample it's not it's up to the producer but unless there's been a conversation 
But in this case, as you can see, we're willing to make concessions for you to get your fair share. So actually, it's me making the concessions here because he sold a stolen sample. And I'm like, you know what? You can still have some um, publishing split, right? So like, I'm actually being the one that's been quite reasonable here. And he's flipped on his head like, we'll be good to you, you know, because but I've done nothing wrong in this situation. Anyway, I was like, and then he says, I was under the impression you would have received a warning. I had no idea that the video would be completely taken down. Another lie, as you'll see soon. He he and his uh, lawyer agreed to take this video down as a form of leverage. Um, it was our only possible negotiation tactic to get a response. Maybe message me. They're there scratching their head. How can we get a response? Okay, we'll take his video down, <laughs> issue a copyright strike, which also maybe I message violate the contract. Um, not intentionally. Um, so the only possible tactic, dude, message me send me an email like you've messaged me before to tell me that you love my work so like send me an email about this anyway um he says he also wants to wrap it up immediately and get the song back online another lie as you will see later on because he decides to stick to his guns and use the video as leverage anyway the plot thickens i get an email from their lawyer and um i'm not going to share it in case they start claiming i'm, sh I'm sharing things i'm not supposed to um but i get an email and it says on top of the publishing split they want a three thousand pound payment right they want a 15 percent retroactive split of the master which is nothing to do with publishing which means like 15 percent of everything the song has ever made since it came the song like the ugh, wow came out um retroactively so since it's come out to this moment and then in, into the future when i've paid for an unlimited sa sample uh, unlimited license beat and with that you're talking money from record sales you're talking money from streaming things you're talking all of that when they haven't put any effort into promoting yeah. the song he's made a beat and he's stolen part of the beat and he wants 15 percent of everything the song has ever made for that plus the three thousand pounds advance out of principle i wasn't going to give him that but of course a because like I would, may have been slightly open to negotiations if they hadn't used the song as leverage and actually treated me like a decent person. I hadn't put like it lies about the situation, right? But nah, out of principle, I wasn't going to agree to that. And also to clarify, when I've been in rooms with producers and we've made a song from scratch, I've done a lot of like 50-50 splits or I've done like 25-75 or with other collaborated artists, we just agree on a split that's like 50-50-25. So, you know, like 15% isn't outrageous, right? What's out? What's outrageous is that they already sold it with an unlimited license right from the get-go. So you go into BeatStars thinking, I'm buying an unlimited license for this much money, right? And I was broke at the time when I bought that beat. Um, so it's like you go into the situation buying something and then later on down the line, it can come back and sting you if they go, oh, this slight thing, well, we found a loophole here, which means that now you owe us all this money, right? So it's like it was kind of unfair because say, say you buy a painting off somebody for £10, the and then the the price of it rises exponentially because maybe the painter dies or something or he becomes really popular you don't then just go back to the person you sold it to and go oh that painting's worth like 20 times more now give me a bit more money for it because the transaction's been done and that's kind of how i felt about the beat stars thing it wasn't about me losing money it was about the principle of like we've we've stepped into this agreement and I was in full faith thinking I was buying an unlimited sample, but that's uh, unlimited license, sorry. But that's not actually what's happened, is it? Right. And it says that if I don't agree to this, they're within their right to claim 100% of the song because I have breached something in the contract, right? Now, this is what I breached. <clears throat> Apparently, content ID was turned on on the track, okay, on YouTube. Um, as you'll see from my earlier on in this video, I actually specifically requested content ID turn, was turned off and my YouTube guide did turn it off. Um, there has been something uh, to do with the distribution where somewhere along the line, even after I specifically requested this, it may have gotten turned on at some point, right? Where this doesn't actually make any money, which we've got proof of because I actually let reactors, I, I let content creators um, monetize their own videos where they're reacting to my songs i've done this since the start because i believe that everyone should get paid it helps promote me i'm not losing out everyone's a winner a rising tide lifts all ships baby so like i i'm like they're using this as leverage but legally but thus is the world they actually had something to lean on with that so they were like look if you don't uh, agree to these terms 15 percent retroactive master split um this share on publishing 
um, and a £3,000 advance against the master, uh, we're going to take 100% of what you own. At this point, I'm obviously pretty f***ing annoyed, uh, <laughs> which yeah. is pretty understandable, right? Anyway, yeah. at this point, they've got my attention, so there's no reason they need to use the video for Sick Boy as leverage, right? So I give them a fair warning. I'm like, mate, if you don't put the video back up on Friday, I'm going to have to put a public post explaining why it's down. And I give him a fair warning, which is also important to remember, because later on he plays the victim, saying that I've put a post encouraging my fans to bully him, which I didn't. I gave him a fair warning about it. I never once encouraged them to bully him. I just needed to explain why my video was down, because this was proper stressing me out. And I, and I feel like I didn't want to be silenced about the whole situation. But the time comes around, I put the post out. And I'm always still thinking for like a positive solution here. So I have like a brainwave of like, oh, I've got a brilliant solution, right? So I approach him and I'm like, dude, look, I know that things have got complicated here, but out of principle, I don't really want to budge on the master split for this thing, but I've got a much better idea. Because a lot of my fan base are like now giving him, because I put the public post out, a lot of my fan base are giving him grief. And I'm like, you know what? I want this guy's life to get ruined because of this. Like, it's despite how f frustrated it's made me. I don't, want to get, I don't want this guy to get ruined. I don't want him to get abused about it. I just wanted to get the song back. That was the thing. So like, I sent him a message. I'm like, dude, look, I thought of a thing. Because I, because I am a man of principle, I didn't want to bend to threats and stuff about the song being claimed 100%. So I'm like, I've got a much better idea. Let's make a song. We'll split it 50-50 down the middle. Master, publishing, everything. A song from scratch. Then if we do that way, it'll be like a fuck you to the industry. Yeah, You and me on a track. Um, you'll make way more money this way because it's 50-50. It's you'll also get my fan base on your side. It's going to be a great thing. Because I'm always like, I want to look forward. I don't want to look backwards. I don't want to look at all these things that happened what in the past. What a beautiful like, soul. That's such a... Wow. This is actually going to make him even more. And he rejected it. He turned it down, which I still think to this day is a bit of a silly move given what happened and what happened next. But... It's a shame, man. And if you're watching this, you really should have taken that. I'm sure you are watching it. You really should have taken that deal. It was brilliant. Um, not only would it set you up with way more money, which is obviously what you most care about in this situation, but it also got loads of my fans on your side, which would also set you up for all things that you release independently as well, and you'd have come out this looking good. Shame. I offered you that olive branch. I offered quite a few olive branches on numerous occasions which you weren't interested in. Then after that, there's a post on Instagram saying that I've stolen samples from people, <laughs> which is bizarre because I never have. So I send him a message being like, that he, he said that a British artist has got in touch with him and been like, Ren steal samples, which is obviously complete made up bullshit, right? So I message him about that. I'm like, what samples have I stolen? The Vera Hall one that I just put out, totally cleared. We cleared that with publishing company because I actually don't like steal my samples. And then any covers that I've done, they're just on YouTube. You're allowed to do that because there's a cover license on YouTube. So, like, what are you talking about? To which he then just, like, ignores it, takes the post down, and then, like... Uh, <laughs> and then just goes on some other fucking tangent. Honestly? So, so difficult working, like, when there is a... Someone like that on the other side. The fact that he gave so many olive branches... Shows just to the character of friend. What, what a beautiful soul. So it's like kind of grasping at straws here to make me look like the bad guy. So we arranged to have this call with the lawyers and Cujo. And I'm actually really excited to have the call because it's the first time I can talk to Cujo face to face, deal, deal with this like grown ups, like adults, and talk to each other. Um, but <laughs> it's not how it pans out. So we get on the call, and the first thing that happens is the lawyer just says, Look, Ren, I think that you taking this public was very unprofessional. And I was like, Hold on a second, I wasn't the person who took this public first of all, like, taking the video down is a, an aggressive move, and also, I didn't take it public first of all, Kujo was commenting countless things on his YouTube before I even made the comment, A, calling me a liar, a coward, a numb, so like, to say that I took this public, nah, I just responded to what happened, and then explained to my fans while the song was down, those posts are still up for everyone to see, all the posts on his comments are, are still, uh, there for everybody to see so first of all it was kind of like we got into it straight away with me like having to be like i put it straight and everyone was like okay yeah fair enough the funniest thing about that call is Cujo was on it he did not say a single word even when i like addressed him with questions his, his lawyer would interject and go i can answer that and i'm like yeah i kind of want to talk to the person who's like <laughs> you know like an adult i want to talk to this person 
Um, and then my lawyer even, there's even a moment where my lawyer's like, look, I want to address this, this uh, question to Cujo. Do you actually feel like this fit situation is fair? He says nothing and the lawyer interjects again. So for that whole call, which, you know, took about half an hour, 40 minutes, he didn't say a single word. And I thought that was disrespectful given the circumstances. He later said, claimed that it was because he doesn't legally know enough and it should be between the lawyers. But no, man, like regardless of your legal knowledge, we can still have a conversation like adults. Like I'm not, I'm not here to try and like intimidate or anything like that. I want to talk to you. Such like a, a grown up soul. brother and um, wow. and that didn't happen I, I wasn't afforded that luxury I was talking a fair bit on that call about how I felt about the situation and what I felt was right and I also said on that call that I didn't think that a retroactive split was right um, because of all the re reasons I've mentioned but it is what it is man and then we came off the call and I felt pretty let down by it to be honest this is where the plot gets even more ridiculous and I'm sorry this is a long video guys but <laughs> This is mad and this is emotionally exhausting this bit. So I read a bunch of comments on Instagram from this person talking about the contract, saying things that aren't actually in the contract. I'm like, who the f is this? So I message him and be like, yo, by the way, you're misinformed. The contract actually doesn't state uh, that it's on me to clear the samples. Then I click on the profile. I realize that it's Cujo's girlfriend. So I immediately unsend all those messages. Because to be honest, look, he was getting grief from my fans. And I think to myself, you know what? He needs someone supporting him, even though that he's been an asshole. I don't want to like start messaging his girlfriend and shit, whatever. I'll leave her out of this. But she sees that I've unsent the messages and she instigates the conversation, says, have you done an oopsie? We start chatting for a long time. We'll put those messages up so that you can read it. It actually ends up being, it seems to me, like it's like semi-amicable after a while of talking to each other. <laughs> Like we, we sh you can pause this and read this if you want. It's like, basically the long and short of it is, is like she feels like Cujo has been misrepresented and and feels like it's a lot of the industry's fault, my lawyer's fault and stuff like that, which is kind of what Cujo feels like, right? She then threatens to break my kneecaps, which even though it's a little bit out of pocket, you know me, I laugh about it. The thing is, the thing that rubs me up about things like that is, if that had been the other way around, I never actually once got violent about this situation. If that had been the other way around, they would have been like, run such a violent, later on, they yeah, would have been like, run such a violent person or using bully tactics because they- Would have posted it everywhere. S spoken about like how I'm using bully tactics by simply talking about the situation publicly, transparently. She also gaslights me by saying, you know, like imagine what would have happened if he had mental health issues. I have a very long list of mental health issues. I am the person with mental health issues. You're not considering what it does to my mental health, are you? when you take down a song that means that much to me, uh, a song that I've, I've poured into, that I'm exposing a part of me that's very vulnerable uh, about my health journey. Like, you're not considering that, are you? All I've done is post publicly about um, about the situation. I've never told anybody to send you guys abuse or anything like that. And actually, if anybody's watching this right now for, clar for clarity, even though I am very annoyed about the situation, I don't want anyone to send them abuse. I don't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm annoyed about the situation. We know, man. We know. Such a kind soul. But it's done now. The song's down. It's gone. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I don't... I'm not in trying to ruin somebody's life over this. I'll have my own form of revenge, as you'll see at the end of this video. But I'm not trying to ruin anyone's life over this. So, like, if they say to me that I'm trying to incentivize stuff like that, I'm not, guys. I don't want you to go and abuse them. Right? But... It is up to me to talk about this situation fairly. So, like, we seem to make some middle ground. She's even talking to me about, like, her ADHD and knows that I've got ADHD and, like, you know, maybe we've just got... So I'm like, you know what? She seems pretty level-headed, right? So, like, cool. You know what? Maybe these guys are... It's just a big misunderstanding and we can figure a way to amicably sort this out. And I say to her, look, yeah, I'm happy to split the publishing, but I don't really want to split the master out of principle because I bought this, right? You know, but... I then at this point I start being like you know what maybe I'll split some of the master for the future stuff just to get this out of the way even though I don't believe I should because they've stolen the beat with a stolen sample I'm like if this just gets this over the line I'm happy to split the future master I even say that in the email thread to the lawyers and stuff right so I'm like I'm conceding a little bit here because I just want this situation done with we end on a good note in this conversation then the next morning <laughs> I wake up to post from her all over my reddit lying about the contract and then I see a comment on Anthony Ray's video where he's talking about the situation from her saying this is what the contract says and she made up 
some, she wrote a whole passage that wasn't even in our contract. It was completely made up. So after her being super nice to me behind the scenes in this conversation and feeling like we've read, I wake up to read this and I'm like, I start losing my mind because I'm like, these guys, they're like, they pretend they're on my side and then- they, They're pros, they're pros. It's just like they publicly post all this stuff. So I'm like, I put her up on it. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, first of all, this is defamation. You can't I'll be out here like making up stuff that's not even in the contract, you know? So she's like, <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous, right? So next, I find a bunch of messages on Reddit from Cujo's girlfriend lying about the contract, which I'm going to put up here, which is actually very illegal, by the way. Um, no, I won't be pressing charges over it. I just want to get the situation out of the way, but... Um, <sighs> so I'm just going to put all these up for you to pause and read if you want to. It's ridiculous, basically. Um, she also says that I was obviously upset so I wasn't the most cooperative as you guys if you skip back in this video you'll see I was extremely cooperative when I extremely. found out what was going on I was being very amicable when I was trying to offer Cujo solutions and being amazingly supportive and the and split on the master I refused to fully acknowledge that a mistake on my end causing Cujo not to get paid was at the heart of all of this it wasn't a stolen sample was the heart of all of this yes the, the, the publishers right failed to correctly register Cujo which wasn't anything to do with me. They've now remedied that and there'll be a back payment for whatever percentage we end up on. No money's been lost here, right? That is something that was the publisher's fault, which I was very annoyed about, which I actually sent a message to the publishers about explaining how annoyed I was about that situation, fighting for Cujo in that, when I didn't have to fight for Cujo because he was being a prick, right? So. I sent that message to them anyway, fighting on Cujo's side, because despite all of this, I am a man of principle still, right? I kept threatening to sue and go public. No, I didn't. I wasn't threatening to sue. Um, I did say I would go public if my song carried on uh, being used as leverage. I gave them a very fair warning. I need to use the song, the video as leverage, and they kept on doing that. That was because I kept getting hundreds of messages a day from my fans being like, where's the video, where's the video? And I wanted to address it all at once. And I also felt like I was being treated extremely unfairly. Right? Um... I had to accept by giving up all my shares of the song exchange for a fixed fee. Um, yeah, that was sent between my lawyers. Ren took in public the next morning. Yes, I did. They are such pros, really. Good people that handle those kind of people get smacked on really right let's take this home now at this point i've just lost all amicability right i'm pissed off i, I messaged kujo's girlfriend and him saying it's the first time i've threatened to sue but i'm like if i see any more lies from you guys about this situation i will sue you guys um because it's like that's my public image like i pride myself on the fairness that i show everyone that I work with, right, and, and my principles, and I'm also very against greed, and I stand against it militantly, which a lot of you will know from my work, and how I treat people, how I treat people that I work with, right, so them spreading this stuff that I'm trying to be greedy here massively hurts my public image, so I was like, if you guys lie any more about this, yeah, I'm going to do something about it, basically, and then I'm talking to Cujo, and things <sighs> get more heated, we get another email from their lawyer saying, you know, like, just, yeah, I'm going to do something about it, basically. And then I'm talking to Cujo, and things get more heated. We get another email from their lawyer saying, you know, like, if you won't agree to our terms, we will take 100% of the song. That's where we stand on it. That is final. If you do not agree to this retroactive master split, we're taking everything. So I messaged back. I'm going to show you that email. I messaged back, essentially summarizing this email. I just say, I'm going to take down the song myself. I'm fed up of this. I I'm fed up of you threatening me with my own song that I poured myself into. I've explained what it means to me. I explained to both of them what it means to me. So I'm like, I'm taking it down myself. I don't want to let them win over this. I I've been in situations in the music industry before where I had to concede because I was broke and I just had to let a powerful, greedy person win over me. You know, like, and I know this is not the same situation. It's not like Cujo is like, like this in this huge position of power here, but how they've dealt with this whole situation was ridiculous so i was like rather than like bend to this leverage and just out of principle i'm just going to take the song off 
and it's ironic man because the song is about greed you know and it hurts me a lot that it's down now it proper hurts me man. I, I, I can't stress that enough because of what the song was and what the song meant to me but that's the way the cookie crumbles so I, I sent these emails I also send a mass email out to everybody the publisher uh, Cujo uh, the lawyers involved just saying how disappointed I am across the board even from people on my side I was just disappointed at how this whole situation but uh, dealt with because ultimately at the core of this situation the only person getting proper hurt financially from this is me right because of my hard work that I've done to promote this music because of my story and how that's been exploited I'm the person who will suffer future losses for the earnings and the regardless of earnings fuck earnings for a second that song I was proud of what it meant to people I was proud of uh, the messages that I get from people every day uh, telling me like uh, how much they relate to the song how much it helps them through difficult times you know like that's gone now that's taken away from people so yeah pissed off anyway so I send that email out me and Cujo share some pretty heated words uh, if you're a petty person you'll probably like to pause on some of this it's ridiculous uh, one of the things that took the piss the most that he said uh, when I you know I just lost my call at this point I lost all patience one of the funny things he said after all this was like if you really cared about your fans then you would leave them the song so he was turning it around on me when he'd used the song as leverage he said if you cared about your fans you leave it up for them then he said you're letting my I'm letting my pride and ego get in the way because I'm not paying him money that I didn't think he deserved for selling a stolen beat right he's saying that that's my ego it's my ego's fault and then he's just saying, he kept saying, just pay me, let me get my bag, I want the money, just give me my money. I explained to him. Professional guest lighters for money. I explained to him again, like, dude, I'm not the person that pays you the money, I've explained this to you so many times, it's the publisher, and he's like, alright, cool, it finally seems to sink <laughs> in that like... Your music sucks, by the way, <laughs> you vote... I haven't stolen this man's money. I haven't taken a penny of this man's money. The publisher was at fault for not registering it properly and they're re resolving that and then he'll get his money from the publishing. I don't want a penny of that. I don't care about that money. Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. He deserves a bit of money for making that part of the beat. Sure. He shouldn't have stolen uh, a sample and sold it to me. He, theoretically, he could have all of his publishing taken away. But even after all of this, I still agreed to give him a bit of a publishing split just to shut him up, man. So it's like... I could have been even more petty and dug my feet in there, but I just want this situation over with. So the song's down. <sighs> the funniest comment that I'm going to end this on, because this is going to be some uh, album artwork, by the way. Uh, single artwork, sorry. This is the next announcement. He goes, all right, peace. Your music sucks, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> As we said. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Which is really funny, considering, um, you know, the message earlier where he told me that it was an honour, or it was like, it was really good to work with me, you know, funny, it's funny, hypocritical, funny, 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 but yeah, sure, my music sucks, brother, cool, that's going to be, critical uh, guest lighter. single artwork, which leads me to my last point, ladies and gentlemen, I'm releasing a song about this whole situation, and it's dedicated to Cujo. <laughs> and it's coming out next week it's coming out a week today it's called Cujo Beatdown um, and I love it we made an amazing video for it I made a beat by the way the beat has no unlicensed samples in it I made the whole thing myself I wrote all the lyrics myself all the beats are mine and that will be going up on YouTube and Spotify next week I'll also be recreating Sick Boy because those lyrics and that arrangement is mine. So for the anniversary of Sick Boy the album, you will be getting Sick Boy the beat remade bigger and better than ever without Cujo's input on it. So look forward to that as well. And then there's also a third song drop in. There's a little bit more positive. Next week's song is angry all right i'm just going to warn you there and before kujo and his like that they before they start complaining about blah, blah blah artistic license here you know what i've said my piece i'm not i'm not interested in ruining your life bro but 
I felt like I needed to get it out somehow. And so I got it out somehow. <laughs> and I hope you're watching this, man. And I hope you enjoy the song. Because it's dedicated to you, baby. Anyway, guys, I know that this was a long video. But I wanted there to be no doubt as to where everything stood in this situation. And why you don't have a song that means so much to so many people. And means so much to me. But there will be a revamped version of that song coming very soon, guys. And um, if you've made it this far, thank you. Sincerely. And um, I hope there can be no doubt as to this situation. Thank you. <laughs> what are you on about, man? Saying the music, the, the music sucks. Just say something that can actually make sense. Okay. So we're gonna we're obviously going to react to it. We're obviously going to push it as hard as possible together. We're gonna help Ren as much as possible. We're gonna push the sick boy when it's out as well. Because it's gonna be better because it's his beats. Not single one of Cujo's. Was very important to understand the entire background of what's going on. And we're gonna support him with all our hearts because he deserves it, right? Thank you so much for joining me in today's reaction. Understanding what went on was very important. Thank you for recommending that we watch it. Thank you for everyone saying let's it's time to fight the fight. Ren has asked that all the create all the reaction community and all of you guys, his army to stand behind him and we will. Thank you for being you. I'm going to see you in the next reaction video. Subscribe if you haven't. Beautiful people, beautiful community. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for being you. I'm going to see you in the next reaction video. Thank you. And goodbye.